Good day, everyone, and welcome back to my uh, Jazz Vinyl Audiophile channel. And uh, we're just laying, all, laying it all out there. You see records behind me. You see a, a, a loft with boxes on it. Hey, man, New York living, what can I tell you? But I wanted to go through this new Tone Poet list. My buddies, uh, the Jazz Bums, did their list, and they went pretty deep, I thought. It's really great information they're putting out there. But I thought I would just throw in my two cents on this thing. Um, the Tone Poet releases for the forthcoming year. And some of them are really great and I'm really happy to see. Some of them, my own opinion is I wouldn't spend money on it. Beginning with Scola Ho Fo, John Schofield, Joe Lovano, uh, Al Foster, and I forgot the other fourth note. They almost called O. This is a super group, I bet, put together by the label. Sometimes super groups are great, as in the Bass Desire's record on ECM from the 80s. That's one of the greatest star vehicle records ever but on the flip side uh you have the Matheny john skillful record you can see my house from here it's just kind of a dud to me those guys those two guys don't fire off each other Sk frizzell and Schofield fire it really works there's a lot of interplay but um i've interviewed Schofield a few times and i've heard other people say Matheny's kind of a control freak in the studio all of his solos on his own records are meticulously created bar at a time kind of like walter becker with steely dan did uh I mean, i'm a huge pat Matheny fan but uh that's just not a great record donald bird of the half note that's been a highly collectible record for years uh in pretty much any configuration so that's great to see in march we have carmel jones and andrew hill i'm a fan of carmel jones this is on pacific jazz um really smooth beautiful player not that many records out Anything by Andrew Hill on Blue Note in the 60s is a must-have record. Andrew Hill, Dance with Death. All these records, if you can find them, go for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Uh, even the Liberties are really great. Uh, so I'm looking forward to Dance with Death. I don't know if it's Elvin Jones or Joe Chambers. Moving into April, Chet Baker sings and plays Stanley Turning Game, Mr. Natural, Mr. Natural. I imagine if you're a, a Chet Baker fan, that is a must-have record. Chet Baker, I can take or leave. Stanley Turnty, Mr. Natural, I'm so happy they're reissuing this. Um, you know, I hold the torch for Stanley Turrentine. Uh, one of the great, not only a great player, but a great arranger. And all of his records, even when he went out to CTI, are just fantastic records. He had a beautiful tune, tone. He knew how to play a song. He knew how to play a solo. Um, and Mr. Natural, I believe, includes Billy Cobham on drums, which is pretty freaky when you think about it. But... Uh, if you're a fan of Stanley Turrentine's other records, my favorite Turrentine being Easy Walker with the great Mickey Roker on drums. Mickey played on a lot of Stanley Turrentine's records. Uh, uh, but if you're a fan of Turrentine, this is, this is a must-have recording. In May, Gil Evans and Freddie Hubbard, Great Jazz Standards is really a great record. I, I honestly only heard this about a month or so ago. Gil Evans Orchestra, Great Jazz Standards. And I was just, wow, it's a, you know, he's kind of known for his his arranging, his orchestration skills, the colors he gets. And um, he brings all that to great jazz standards, which I'm sure has a beautiful lineup as well. I don't have the credits in front of me, but that is a great recording on Pacific Jazz, followed by Freddie Hubbard, Blue Spirits. Uh, like Open Sesame, a wonderful early Freddie Hubbard record. All the Freddie Hubbard records on Blue Note are must-haves in my opinion. Um, really cathartic, burning, explosive performances. But for some reason, Freddie doesn't get as much love as uh, obviously Lee Morgan or even Johnny Coles or Donald Byrd. But Freddie, you know, is fire, bring his, to me, Freddie Hubbard's like the Jimi Hendrix of, of trumpet playing, just scalding, burning. I'm a really uh, strong, powerful player. Maybe not as lyrical as those other guys, but if you want someone to burn down the house, Freddie's your man. Um, in June, Donald Byrd's Slow Drag, McCoy Tyner, Time for Tyner. Slow Drag is one of those great early blue notes uh, that is very hard to find. I believe Slow Drag has a, uh, a woman's face on the cover. I'm not sure, but I believe it's a Billy Higgins record. Could be wrong, people love to correct me. I'm sure they'll correct me if I'm wrong about that. But to me, all the Donald Byrd records on Blue Note also are really uh, great recordings. Some of the classic stuff on Blue Note. Followed by McCoy Tyner, Time for Tyner. I don't know that one as well. Um, I love all the impulse of McCoy Tyner records, but I don't know that one as well. On July 7th, Sonny Clark Trio and Hank Mobley, Caddy for Daddy. Now that is going to be a stellar month. Worth waiting for, worth 
putting in your pre-orders for. Sonny Clark Trio is with, I believe, Wilbert Ware and Philly Joe Jones. I have a Liberty version of it. One of the great Sonny Clark records, one of the great Blue Notes, and Hank Mulby Caddy for Daddy. You know, the whole stretch of Hank Mulby records are a wonderful library in themselves. Great player, great arranger. I think a really great composer. His tunes are so hip. And so, I mean, they're of the 60s, but they're very lyrical and very dynamic. It features great solos. A Caddy for Daddy is, might be one of the top ones for me on this entire list. All the Hank Mobley's are great. Soul Station, um, No Room for Squares, even the later records like Thinking From Home. Uh, they're just, uh, he was a, a wonderful player. And that might be my top record on this entire list. Slow Drag is really also highly thought of. Andrew Hill, Dance With Death, you can't beat that. August, Lee Morgan, Infinity, and Duke Pearson, The Right Touch. I have Infinity, I don't know it too well, but Duke, Duke Pearson is kind of overlooked in the Blue Note stable and the right touch is one of his great records as is introducing which is duke pearson's big, big band uh i believe in sweet honeybee i mean that's one of the great blue note records of all time so that's nice in september big john patton let him roll which is uh, you know not all the john patton records are great but that's a great one i believe it's one of the red cover wayne shorter's schizophrenia now this is probably my number one on this list i have like five copies of that thing i bought one last week Anything with Wayne Shorter, he is the master composer on Blue Note. Speak No Evil, Night Dreamer, Juju, those are all just must-have records. To me, I have to be in the right mood to listen to any of the Wayne, Wayne Shorter records because those compositions and those performances have a really emotional effect on me. I have to be ready to deal with those and get put myself in the right headspace. You know... Hank Mobley is breezy, driving down the street. It's a beautiful day, the weekend. Wayne Shorter, it might be foggy outside. You might be reading a book. It's not music for couples, I would say, the Wayne Shorter records, but it's, they're so intensely beautiful. They're just searing and uh, and Elvin Jones is just amazing on all those records. Joe Chambers on some of the Wayne Shorters as well. October 6th, Herbie Nichols Trio, Herbie Nichols Trio, and Jack McLean Demon's Dance. Let's run up to Demon's Dance. Amazing cover, early Jack DeJanet, amazing compositions. And in a way, Demon's Dance is a singular record among all of Jackie's recordings. There were quite a few on Prestige that are uh, sort of pickup sessions. You can tell um, they're not as strong as all the amazing stuff he did later on Blue Note, like um, was it New and Old Gospel, uh, just so many burning records. You know, he can be hard to get into sometimes because his, his tone is always a little flat or sharp. It's not on the money, but that's part of his sound. But what a great composer. And Demon's Dance, I think, is one of his most unified records, one of his most progressive records, even though all the Jack McLean records are progressive because he's just sort of, you know, one step beyond, you might say. Um, November 3rd, Kenny Burrell, KB Blues. I don't know that at all. Or Jack Wilson, Easterly Wins. Jack Wilson, sort of the lost leader on Blue Note. Those records don't really sell. It's interesting they chose that. I think he's probably a great arranger. KB Blues, I don't know it at all. That's interesting. And in December, closing out with Grant Green, I want to hold your hand, McCoy Tyner Extensions. I don't know, Grant Green with Elvin Jones playing a bunch of slow t songs, I wouldn't spend the money. But if you know me, I'm not a huge Grant Green fan, I'm a huge Kenny Burrell fan. But I want to hold your hand in particular, really just sort of sits there, man, it doesn't move. Uh, and the opposite, McCoy Tyner Extensions, a classic great blue note. So a wonderful lineup. And why don't we talk a little bit about the classic vinyl re reissues series cur curated by longtime Blue Note publicist Jem Karosman, and also printed at a different shop than the uh, Tone Poets are. This month, Grant Green, Green is Beautiful, and Bobby Hutchinson, San Francisco. Don't know that Hutchinson record. Next month, Blues Nick, woo, by Jackie McLean and Horace Parlin, speaking my piece. Blues Nick, a great, classic, early period Blue Note. It's just an amazing uh, recording of his 
you know, aggressive off kilter compositions, which really bring in the players. Horace, Por Horace Parlin speaking my piece. The three or four records he did for Blue Note are also must-haves, and one of his hands wasn't working entirely. But Parlin on the piano gets this, his tunes are like progressive, they're gospel, they run the gamut on so many things. They're intellectual, they're emotional, uh, and they're really, really hard to find in any kind of shape. I mean, among all these titles, I would say the Horace Parlins are the hardest to find in any uh, pressing. They're just impossible to find, um, never mind condition. So that's also in my top five of these new reissues. Herbie Hancock, Empyrean Isles, one of the classics. Sam Rivers, Fuchsia Swing Song in March. That's part of the whole era of really progressive Blue Note records like Unity or uh, One Step Beyond from Jackie McLean, you know, where they're pushing the free-ish edge. That's with Tony Williams, an absolute must-have. You know, I was growing up, first getting into records, uh, or jazz records, Fuchsia Swing Song was a must-have, as was uh, Maiden Voyage, anything by Hank Mobley, so those are great. Dizzy Reese Starbright. The Dizzy Reese albums in perfect condition are extremely valuable. He only made a couple albums for Blue Note. That's a great one. Johnny Cole's Little Johnny C. That's been available as a Japanese reissue for a long time. That's just a great mid-tempo you know, medium bop uh, record. Only one record for uh, Blue Note. May, Miles Davis, Volume 1, and Fats Never Arrow, the fabulous Fats Never Arrow, a trumpet twofer. Uh, volume 1 is early Miles still coming up from his bebop era, and that's a, uh, is that a must-have? I don't know. If you don't have the Miles first or great, first or great quintet or second quintet, I would get, all of those records before I got Miles Davis Volume 1. Fats Navarro, the fabulous Nat Fats Navarro, is a great documentation of Navarro. Then, June 16th, Robert Glasper in My Element, Mad Lib Shades of Blue, both extremely popular uh, records. Glasper, one of the few players who can sound as contemporary as anybody, you know, be it hip hop or whatever, then turn around and play incredible straight ahead. He's an amazing musician. July, two more great albums. I Quebec, Heavy Soul, Lonnie Smith, Turning Point. I Quebec, PR man for, rather, uh, A&R agent for Blue Note at the time. Heavy Soul is one of the classics of, if you drink bourbon, you sit down and have your bourbon, your cigar, you put on Heavy Soul. Uh, I Quebec has a huge sound. Out of the Ben Webster School, I think of it, but just a great player. August 18th, they go out with two avant-garde records, as I mentioned earlier from Blue Note, Anthony Williams, Tony Williams Spring, and Cecil Taylor Unit Structures. There are two or three, I think there's Spring and one other one, on Blue Note from Tony, and they're all must-haves. But Spring is just so amazing. It's very still. I think it's a great peacock on bass. It really showed Tony's compositional skills he really wanted to be a composer before his death. He was on his way to doing it. His last album was Wilderness. Uh, but to me, that's, you know, Spring is kind of like a Rothko painting. It's stark. It's simple in a way, but it's very deep and beautiful. Cecil Taylor unit structures I don't know as well, but, uh, I'm not a big fan of Cecil Taylor, but his records on Blue Note are pretty great. I had Coltrane time a while back with uh, Coltrane and uh, Cecil Taylor. Very interesting record, but I can't, I'm not a, really a fan of all Cecil Taylor's uh, more outplaying. Anyway, that's my 14 minute and 18 seconds run down of all these new goodies coming to you from the fabulous team of Joe Harley, Kevin Gray, Don was, and Jim Carusman. Buy more jazz. Bye.